in this video I'm going to show how I made a floor hammer cat bed and scratching post. This was for my younger sister and a boyfriend who have recently just got two new kittens and they've named them Thor and Loki. So I thought a Thor hammer cat bed would be quite fitting. So I started by making a frame uh, out of 3 by 2s um, there's a lot of design changes in this project. When I cut the 3 by 2s down, I used the miter saw to cut them. I then realised when I sort of laid it all out that they were far too bulky. So I ripped them down on the bandsaw. And these proportions were much better. So that was the first design change of many. So I laid it out into a rectangle shape and glued them all together using just butt joints that are going to be reinforced with some dowels later on. I didn't want to use any screws on the project because my plan was to actually cut a 45 degree angle into the frame uh, which I've not ended up doing. I've done something slightly different but dowels are nice and strong anyway so um, it worked out absolutely fine doing it this way. So I just glued them all up and left them in clamps and then came back with a 9mm uh, brad point bit and some 9mm dowel just because I had loads of it. And once I'd glued it in I came back with my Japanese full saw and cut the dowel flush. I did this on all the joints on the frame. I don't know what it is, but I just find using dowels really satisfying. And they, they, you know, they make for a really strong joint, and also they they look nice. Not that you're going to see them on this, but you know, they, they just make it aesthetically pleasing. It did make it easier as well gluing up with this using dowels because when I put the side pieces on, as I'm drilling there. Uh, I'm drilling through the other dowels that I've already put in uh, to hold the other side on uh, which obviously you wouldn't be able to do if you had metal fasteners in there and it works absolutely fine with dowels so it's nice and strong and it meant that I could carry on with the project without it slowing me down waiting for the glue to dry. Then once it was all glued up and the glue was dry, I came back and gave it a good sanding um, and made sure I sanded all the insides as well. Next I glued up the what will be the hammer handle or the scratch post and this was yet another design change. I just used two pieces of 2x3 for this. And I did this a couple of times because I wanted to make it round because Thor's hammer is round. But I just couldn't get it to look right. It, I, the proportions just seemed awful. Um, so I left it square because with the size of the hammer head or the, the box, um, having it square was, it just was, in my view, the right proportions for it. And it just looks better, so I left it square. So when the glue was dried on this, next came the most tedious thing I think I've ever done in my life, which was to wrap this sisal or sisal, I'm not sure how you pronounce it, uh, scratch rope around. And every so often, I just um, put a few had nails through it just to hold the rope in place and it was actually by dumb luck that I actually stopped about 12 millimeters from the bottom which is where I needed to stop but I just happened to have run out of rope. Next I cut down the side panels using a track saw and I just used the other the piece I just cut to mark up the other piece and cut two identical ones one of them needed a square hole in to um, seat the pole. So 
I found the centre by joining the corners on the panel and the scratch poles. Then I punched a small hole into the panel. Then I put a nail in the scratch post and nipped the end off with some pliers. And then I put the nail over it so that it found the hole. And then I just sort of push it down so that I could draw around it so I knew it was exactly central. I don't know if there's an easy way of doing it, but it was really quick to do and I know it was bang on in the middle, if that even makes sense. And then I, after I'd drawn it out, I put four holes in the corners just on the inside of the line and I came back with a jigsaw and cut the square shape out. Um, I did it so that I was away from the line so that I could sneak up on it with a rasp which is what I did to get a tight fit. And then I glued on the top and the bottom and I used clamps to hold them down because by this point I was still um, thinking that I was going to put the 45 degree angles on them uh, but that soon changes. Um, so I just held them both in at the same time because I didn't really have enough clamps though so later on I was realised that I could use smaller clamps and just not clamp them all straight across so that's what I did to make sure everything was um, clamped down evenly. And there's my lovely creative clamping and yes there's probably enough clamps on it. So once they were dried I changed the design by this point and I came back and put the sides on and I just brad nailed them in. But I made sure to keep far away from the sides um, so that I could put a chamfer on the edges later on. Then I cut the side panels down for it. Um, these were done on the table saw and they were made from 18mm plywood. Uh, I'd used 12mm for the rest of the project but I was just trying to use those scraps and these were just quite small pieces. So I just gave them a quick sand because obviously you can't get to the inside once they're all on. And then I used a circle uh, that I already had made from the dog feeder um, and cut most of the waste out with a jigsaw and then used that for my router to ride on with a flush trim bit which made it really quick and really neat. It's held down with double sided sticky tape and I always put masking tape on the workpiece just so that it doesn't leave any sticky marks on it. Masking tape comes off way easier. And then it was the same again, I just glued it onto the side and brad nailed it on. Again I just tried to make sure I stayed away from the edges. Then same again on the front piece, this is where the cats can go in, they want the, the hole on it. I just glued that on. I uh, accidentally put it on upside down as well, uh, but I just made sure I sorted that out. And then brad nailed that into place. And that's it, the width for the, for the shape. The box is complete. It is just essentially a box with a hole in the top and at the side. Then I came back with some wood filler and just made sure that all the edges were nice and smooth so it sort of blended into one and covered up all the um, brad nail holes that I'd done. So it did end up being like all the edges that were joined together um, and just did it so that it was nice and smooth or as smooth as I could get it. And then I came back with my router and a chamfer bit and I chamfered all the edges to a very small 45 degree angle. It's obviously a lot more pronounced on Thor's hammer, but I didn't want to run this through my table saw because if you've, probably, if you've seen any previous videos, you'll see my table saw is rubbish and I don't have a very safe fence. But I'll be getting a new one soon. Uh, and then I went over all the edges with the block plane just to make it a little bit deeper, and then I came back and sanded it all down. And then I painted it with a roller 
this is Rustoleum's chalk paint and the colour I used was anthracite and it's really nice, it's lovely grey and I did three coats of this paint and then once all the paint was dried I came back with the scratch post and the bit at the bottom that was left exposed on purpose not because I ran out of rope uh, was uh, I just wood glued that and I stuck it on the inside I was careful not to paint the inside of the um, where that was going to go because obviously the glue won't stick to the paint and I just made sure it was level with a speed square and then I glued a well, sort of end cap onto that I just painted it grey it was just a piece of pine and uh, red nailed it down and then that was it I just needed to finish it um, over the paint so I put some polyurethane over it and I did two coats of this and I denibbed with 400 grit wet and dry um, in between the coats and then that's it uh, so I'll go and deliver this uh, to my sister and hopefully little Darwin Loki love it so thanks for watching